Peter with ArcadePartsAndRepair.com and I had a few customer questions about filter caps for uh, arcade monitors and I had some problems trying to get them out. So we're going to address uh, the filter cap problem here. Uh, the old filter caps obviously are going to be much, much larger than the new ones nowadays because uh, technology obviously has made them much smaller. So don't be nervous if you get a filter cap and it's half the size or much, much smaller than your original filter cap. These here, basically, this is out of a G07. This is out of, I think, a K47 or 4600 Wells Gardner. Um, and this one in particular is the one we're going to address. Um, but anyway, we'll go over a couple things here first, is that you're going to have four lugs on these filter caps and they're all going to be actually have letters on them or numbers or you know they got colored spots and if you look at the sides of them they'll actually show you this the negative symbol is your negative lead B is your positive lead A and C are just dummy lugs so they're just there to stabilize the cap um, so you've got your negative and your positive these two are just there because the cap is so large just to kind of stabilize it. Um, and that's the way you have that, and that's why you don't have that on the new caps nowadays is they're not near as large, so they don't need the stabilization to uh, uh, keep them on the board properly there. But the problem, these are very simple to get out. You know, you can take your vacuum desoldering gun and you can pull them out. Um, I have a K4900 chassis here, um, Wells Gardner. This one here doesn't have a filter cap like this, but when they have the, instead of the pins, they have the spade leads like this, these can be a pain in the butt to get out. And I'll show you a little trick how to get these out. Um, whereas these, you can suck the solder off, all four leads, pops right out, no problem. But you can't get the desoldering gun physically, you know, will not go over them to suck it around it properly. So that's the problem that you run into is they get very difficult for people. And these are the questions I get um, because they damage the board or damage the pads here trying to get it out. So these are the ones we're gonna be focusing on how to get out. Um, and these are the only ones I would use this little trick on. So we'll put these off to the side. So the first thing you wanna do is basically um, take and uh, add solder to your existing um, leads at that point. So that way you got uh, all brand new solder there on the actual leads. Just add some in there because that old solder doesn't uh, uh, flow very nicely and this trick will actually work much better if you got good fresh solder on them. So we're just going to add a bunch of solder to them. And that's all we're going to do there is add that solder. And then we're going to basically take, uh, <clears throat> we're going to take the heat gun and you want to be very, you want to be very careful with the heat gun because one, obviously you're going to burn yourself doing it this way. And two, you're going to basically, um, you could basically wreck the board there. So you want to be careful on how much you do that and uh, just pay very close attention so you don't lift any pads or do any damage to any traces. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to just heat all four of these leads up at the same time with the heat gun. And we're just focusing in this one little area here. And we want to try to get them evenly heated so we're kind of melting the solder at that point and then you want to uh, just kind of wiggle them and it pulls it right out And that's, that's basically how you get these, uh, um, how you get these with the spade leads on them. And you got to be careful though before you do this. Sometimes this negative lead I've seen is twisted a little bit. Um, so when they put it in the board, they 
kind of put a twist on it like that. So you want to actually make sure that's straight before you go ahead and do this. So now at this point, you haven't damaged any of those leads there. And all you have to do then is just take your uh, vacuum desoldering gun Oh, there's one that we had an issue with there, and that's what you got to be very careful of here is losing that pad at that point. So that's what you don't want to do. So you got to be careful when you heat these up that you don't get too much heat over on certain areas because you can actually lift some of those traces. See, it looks like we got a little bit too much heat basically up in this upper area here in this upper pad so um, these pads here turned out nice we didn't get too much heat on them but it popped right out but a lot of times I see people damaging these pads pretty bad trying to get these spades out because you can't get into them to really suck the solder very well and remove it completely so and trying to heat four of them at one time gets very difficult so but that's basically what you want to do but you don't want to end up with that, which that is fixable there, and actually you could use that um, lead right there if you desoldered that uh, spot um, for um, the terminal there. So I just wanted to go over a few things on that so you understood you know, what you can do on these. And like I say, this one here has the numbering and everything else, which if you just read the side of this, it'll tell you what the numbers are for, um, and that way you know which one's positive and negative. So I hope this helps you out, and like I say, this isn't something I would ever do on something that has just regular pin leads that you can use the vacuum desoldering gun on. Um, you always have the opportunity to use soldering debraid, but it really doesn't, uh, I don't like it, uh, it doesn't work as well as, uh, as well as the vacuum desoldering gun and clean it as well, but you have to be super careful about uh, this, but this board obviously you can see is busted and a bunch of other problems with it, so it's just a junk board I have laying around, so I wasn't too worried about being too careful with it. But just make sure to be super careful with uh, heating that so it's even. Um, sometimes you want to use the low setting because you're only ne you only need to basically heat it up about, you know, five to 700 degrees at the very most before you're going to liquefy everything, you know, even less probably on some of that. But the key is also to add solder to it because the old solder doesn't heat it won't heat up well you'll damage the board drastically um, almost every time if you don't add solder to it first so I hope this helps you out and uh, again these uh, filters um, we stock every filter for all the monitors and stuff so if you need anything you can uh, check our website out if you got any questions feel free to contact me and email me I'm happy to help you out and this is Peter again at arcadepartsandrepair.com thanks